the four voodoo are Gon, Dan, Chi, and Yi. Are you not Li Xiao Tao? Why seek the master? I was told to seek help in order to find Young Da Zhu. Young Da Zhu? Young Da Zhu knows why my father was killed by Lan Di. Do you wish to take revenge? I swore that I would. Knowing that you will go astray, would your father wish this? To go astray is to take an immoral path. Taking revenge is no different from murder. Going astray is... I'm not talking to you! I'm talking to the master here! She is Li Xiao Tao. Huh? Out of the four Udu, you only have Gon and Dan. Shuing Hong, born May 24th, 1960, which is one day before my birthday. At just 26 years old, she stands as the master of Manmo Temple. Voiced in the Japanese dub by Sasuke Suzumi, Amanda Satchel in the Shenmue 1 Passport Tutorials, and by my pal Lisa Wilkerson in the Shenmue 2 English dub. A woman of focus, beauty, and creed. Shuing, at first glance, seems to be a stern woman who drives the story of Ryo hitting a wall in his journey of self-awareness. She seems to come off as if she's too busy to deal with him which inherently makes the player think that she is a single-layer character. However, this is entirely wrong. When looking at the grand story of Shenmue, it becomes apparent that Shuing is one of the most important characters in the entire series as we know it so far. We first find out about Shuing from Master Chen. Master Chen knows Ryo will go to Hong Kong and tells him to seek out the aid of a master named Li Xiao Tao, which turns out to be a codename. I will introduce you to someone I know can be trusted. Tao Li Shou, one of Hong Kong's elder masters. The address is in there. Given that we know Master Chen is a well-connected and respected individual, this alone gives much credibility to Shuing. Then, you'll know how to catch the falling leaf. As the story unfolds, we begin to see little bits and pieces of Shuing's personality. She seems stern, but she has a big heart. So let's take a closer look at that. Um... You could have knocked. Sorry. Um... It's okay now. Shuing. Zooming? There are many mysteries surrounding her. Her past itself is a big mystery in the story. However, we do know some key things about her. 
Shuing, at a young age, was orphaned after her parents were apparently killed. Her and her brother Ziming were raised in an orphanage, and when they were young, Ziming left Shuing to go to the Chiyu men to find out what happened to their parents. This, in my opinion, is a very important link to the future of the series. Especially since, in the Xbox version of Shenmue 2, you can unlock a side comic of Ziming where he is shown to be speaking to Niao Sun, who is a confirmed leader of the Chiyu men. I firmly believe we will find out more in Shenmue 3 about this, but that is for a future video. This goes to show that Shuing was pretty abandoned by the remainder of her close family at a young age, which is a very sad thought to think about. This fact, however, I feel leads to her to assume the role of a mother figure. Despite her sternness, we can see how caring she is over a couple of different scenarios. With Ryo, she takes the time to make sure he does not abuse his martial arts outside the guidance of the four Wudu. She taught him focus, patience, and how to become calm, among other lessons. She even took the time to ensure his safety when she knew he was getting into fights. Please let me see the Uling Shu. Oh. Try it. Even a single leaf becomes impossible to catch, unless you're calm enough to concentrate. Right now, all you have on your mind is revenge. You're impatient. She even housed him during his lessons in the form of carrying books out of Manmo Temple. This is a lot of time and energy spent to ensure someone does not fall down the evil path as she herself stated. I really need to find young Dazu. I must avenge my father's death. You still don't understand. Martial arts are used to protect people's lives. If you use your fists otherwise, you will walk on the path of evil too. Why don't you just leave me alone? I don't want to cause you any more trouble. Fine then. Do as you wish. We also can see that she has a relationship with Fang Mei. They come from the same orphanage. Shuing was 12 when Fang Mei was born, so I feel they have a bit of a sisterhood, and I feel that Shuing raised Fang Mei, maybe in a way that Ziming never got to raise her. I feel this way because it seems that Shuing is quite bothered by the fact that Ziming left her at a young age, and I can see her fulfilling maybe the gaps in her life through how she may have raised Fang Mei. With these ideas in mind, it becomes clear that despite Shuing's very stoic nature, she has many emotional layers to her. However, she doesn't show her wounds. But to be honest, when you kind of look at her, you can see a hint of sadness in her eyes. I feel that her character may develop to change a bit when she reunites with Ziming later in the story. With this knowledge in mind, let's go a little deeper. In my quest to research everything I can about Shenmue, it seems that Shuing has some very interesting connections. By dissecting her moves and studying interviews regarding her, we know that Shuing is a master of Baji Quan and Pigok Quan. These two arts can sometimes be studied in parallel, so it's not a surprise that she knows both. However, the part that interests me is the origins of these two arts can be traced to the Hebe province of northern China. In particular, with Baji Quan, it seems that modern Baji Quan possibly originated and is still widely practiced in Meng Sun. Meng Sun, for those who do not know, is the same place that Iwao supposedly killed Zhao Suming. Do you remember Chao Sun Ming? Chao? That's the name of the man you killed in Moon Swan. It can't be you! It interests me every time I research Shenmue that many things always bring us back to Meng Sun. Now to put some data points together. Ziming, Shuing's brother, stated that the Chiyu men likely knew what happened to their parents. Iwao apparently killed the father of Lan Di, a Chiyu men leader, in Meng Sun. Shuing is a master of an art that comes from here and seems to be old enough to have trained a while in Meng Sun, possibly. A part of me wonders whether or not she knows who Ryo's father is or may have even trained in a similar area or with a similar instructor. Maybe she knew who Ryo was the entire time. 
This is a really interesting thought. And so we've reached the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope this video shows many that Shenmue has a very deep story that has so many mysteries surrounding it, containing so many complex characters. Shuing is by far one of the most important characters in this series. Her story arc is a big pivot point between Shenmue 2 and the remainder of the series. She is very complex. She may seem stoic, but her eyes are filled with a sorrow that seem to have guided her down a path of righteousness. She's beautiful in many ways, and definitely a role model for players around the world. She seems to have a heart for those less fortunate than her. She is also driven with a passion to study and teach the martial arts within the guidance of the Four Wudu. Shuing is a character that I personally look up to. As someone who also struggles with a troubled past, I always saw her as a glimmer of hope in the form of a teacher. Whenever I feel stressed or down about life events, I always go back to how she would train Ryo, and how that affected me as the player by extension. I feel that in my younger days, Shuing kind of became a teacher for me too. I am thankful for the lessons that Yu Suzuki put into the game by extension of her. She is truly a role model to me, because no matter how hard life gets, she always pushes forward. And as always, thanks for watching.